Watling Street is a historic route in England that crosses the River Thames at London and which was used in classical antiquity, late antiquity, and throughout the Middle Ages. It was used by the ancient Britons and paved as one of the main Roman roads in Britannia, Roman governed Great Britain during the Roman Empire. The route linked Dover and London in the southeast via St. Albans to Roxeter to the northwest. Watling Street was the traditional site of the Romans' defeat of Bodicia, the line of the road was later the southwestern border of the Danelaw with Wessex and Mercia, and Watling Street was numbered as one of the major highways of medieval England. First used by the ancient Britons, mainly between the areas of modern Canterbury and St. Albans using a natural ford near Westminster, the Romans later paved the route, which then connected the ports of Dubris, Rutupiae, Lemanus, and Regulbium in Kent to the Roman bridge over the Thames at Londinium. The route continued northwest through Verulamium on its way to Viraconium Cornovirum. The Roman Antonine itinerary lists sites along the route of Watling Street as part of a longer route of 500 Roman miles connecting Richborough, with Hadrian's Wall via Roxeter. The continuation onto Blato Bolgium, beyond Hadrian's Wall in modern Scotland may have been part of the same route, leading some scholars to call this Watling Street as well, although others restrict it to the southern leg. In the early 19th century, the course between London and the Channel was paved and became known as the Great Dover Road, today, the route from Dover to London forms part of the A2 Road. The route from London to Roxeter forms much of the A5 Road. At various points along the historic route, the name Watling Street remains in modern use. Chapter 1, Name the original Celtic and Roman name for the road is unknown and the Romans may not have viewed it as a single path at all, dividing it amongst two separate itineraries in one second-century list. The modern name instead derives from the Old English Wekelinga Street, from a time when street referred to any paved road and had no particular association with urban thoroughfares. The Wecklingas were a tribe in the St. Albans area, in the early medieval period with an early name of the city being Weatlingichister, which would translate into modern English as Watlingchester. The original Anglo-Saxon name for the section of the route between Canterbury and London was Casink Street or Key Street, a name still borne by a hamlet on the road near Sittingbourne. This section only later became considered part of Watling Street. Chapter 2, Used as a Boundary Watling Street has been used as a boundary of many historic administrative units, and some of these are still in existence today, either through continuity or the adoption of these as by successor areas. Examples include. Watling Street was used as a boundary in the Treaty of Alfred and Guthrum and it is often inferred that this made the road the SW boundary of the Dane law. It is the boundary of Leicestershire and Warwickshire, this may be a legacy of the treaty described above. Watling Street forms part of the boundary of four London boroughs and is sometimes described as the boundary of West and North London. Chapter 3, History Chapter 3 Section 1, British The broad, grassy trackway found by the Romans had already been used by the Britons for centuries. The main path led from Richborough on the English Channel to a natural ford in the Thames at Thorny Island, Westminster, to a site near Roxeter, where it split. The western continuation went on to Hollyhead while the northern ran to Chester and on to the Picts in Scotland. Chapter 3 Section 2, Westminster Ford There is a long-standing tradition that a natural ford once crossed the Thames between Thorny Island, and the lambeth ash wandsworth boundary. Its location means that it is possible that Watling Street crossed it. Several factors may have slowed the river here, leading to the depositing of enough sediments to create a usable ford. The bend in the Thames near Vauxhall Bridge. The two arms of the river F rejoining in that vicinity, depositing their own load, with the cross flow causing the Thames to eddy and slow. Similarly the southern arm of the Tyburn, once joined the Thames at this point, on the northern bank. These factors mean the area, is likely to have been the tidal head for some of the historic period. Chapter 3 Section 3, Roman 
The Romans began constructing paved roads, shortly after their invasion in AD 43. The London portion of Watling Street was rediscovered during Christopher Wren's rebuilding of St. Mary Le Beau in 1671-73, following the Great Fire. Modern excavations date its construction to the winter from AD 47 to 48. Around London, it was 7.5 to 8.7 meters wide and paved with gravel. It was repeatedly redone, including at least, twice before the sack of London by Bodish's troops in 60 or 61. The road ran straight from the bridgehead on the Thames to what would become Newgate on the London Wall before passing over Ludgate Hill and the fleet and dividing into Watling Street and the Devil's Highway west to Caliver. Some of this route is preserved beneath Old Kent Road. The second century Antonine itinerary gives the course of Watling Street from Uriaconium to Portus Richupis as a part of its second route, which runs for 501 MP from Hadrian's Wall to Richborough. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 Battle of Watling Street Some site in the middle section of this route is supposed by most historians to have been the location of G. Suetonius Paulinus's decisive victory over Bodicia's Iceni in AD 61. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 3 Subsidiary Routes the two routes of the Antonine itinerary immediately following list the stations from Londinium to Portus Dubris, and to Portus Lemanus at the northeastern edge of the Romney Marsh, suggesting that they may have been considered interchangeable terminuses. They only differ in the distance to Duravernum, 14 and 17 Roman miles, respectively. The route to Lemanus was sometimes distinguished by the name Stone Street, it now forms most of the B2068 road that runs from the M20 motorway to Canterbury. The route between Dura Vernum and the fortress and port at Regulbium on Kent's northern shore is not given in these itineraries but was also paved and is sometimes taken as a fourth terminus for Watling Street. The sixth route also recorded an alternate path stopping at Tripontium between Veninus and Banaventa, it is listed as taking 24 Roman miles rather than 17. The more direct route north from Londinium to Ibaracum was Ermine Street. The stations between Ibaracum and Cataractonium were shared with Dare Street, which then branched off to the northeast. Jericho Brivis was the site of the path's intersection with the Icknield Way. The Maiden Way ran from Bravoniacum to the Lead and Silver Mines at Ipiacum and on to Hadrian's Wall. Chapter 3 Section 4, Saxon By the time of the Saxon invasions, the Roman bridge across the Thames had presumably fallen into disrepair or been destroyed. The Saxons abandoned the walled Roman site in favour of Londonwick to its west, presumably because of its more convenient access to the ford on the Thames. They did not return to Londonburg until forced to do so by the Vikings in the late 9th century. Over time, the gravelling and paving itself fell into disrepair, although the road's course continued to be used in many places as a public right of way. Watling Estrade was one of the four roads protected by the King's Peace in the Laws of Edward the Confessor. A number of old English names testify to route of Watling Street at this time Borton Street in Kent, Coley Street in Hertfordshire, Fenny Stratford and Stony Stratford in Buckinghamshire, Old Stratford in Northamptonshire. Stretton under Fossey and Stretton Baskerville in Warwickshire. Chapter 3 Section 5, Viking Following the Viking invasions, the 9th century Treaty of Alfred and Guthrum mentions Watling Street as a boundary. Chapter 3 Section 6, Norman It is assumed that the pilgrims in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales used the southeastern stretch of Watling Street when journeying from Southwark to Canterbury. Chapter 3 Section 7, Modernity The first Turnpike Trust in England, was established over Watling Street northwest of London by an Act of Parliament on 4 March 1707 in order to provide a return on the investment required to once more pave the road. The section from Thornhill north of Hockliffe to Stony Stratford was paved at a cost of £7,000 over the next two years. Revenue was below expectations, in 1709, the Trust succeeded in getting a new act extending the term of their monopoly but not permitting their tolls to be increased. In 1711, the Trust's debts had not been discharged and the creditors took over receivership of the tolls. 
In 1716, a new act restored the authority of the trust under the supervision of another group appointed by the Buckinghamshire Justices of the Peace. The trust failed to receive a further extension of their rights in 1736 and their authority ended at the close of 1738. In 1740, a new act named New Trustees to oversee the road, which the residents of Buckinghamshire described as being ruined. The road was again paved in the early 19th century at the expense of Thomas Telford. He operated it as a turnpike road for mail coaches from Ireland. To this purpose, he extended it to the port of Holyhead on Anglesey in Wales. During this time, the section southeast of London became known as the Great Dover Road. The tolls ended in 1875. Much of the road is still in use today, apart from a few sections where it has been diverted. The A2 road between Dover and London runs over or parallel to the old path. A section of Watling Street still exists in the City of London close to Mansion House Underground Station on the route of the original Roman road which traversed the River Thames via the first London Bridge and ran through the city in a straight line from London Bridge to Newgate. The sections of the road in central London possess a variety of names, including Edgware Road and Maida Vale. At Blackheath, the Roman road ran along Old Dover Road, turning and running through the area of present-day Greenwich Park to a location perhaps a little north of the current Detford Bridge. North of London, the road is designated mainly as the A5 between London and Shrewsbury. At various points along the route, the A5 leaves the Roman road to bypass settlements, but its historic route invariably remains evident even where motor traffic is restricted or banned. The name Watling Street is still used along the ancient road in many places, for instance in Bexley Heath in southeast London and in Canterbury, Gillingham, Strood, Gravesend, and Dartford in Kent. North of London, the name Watling Street still occurs in Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Northamptonshire, Leicestershire, Warwickshire and in Staffordshire. And in Gwynedd, but neither is on the original route. The road has been the site of 18 deaths since 1980, and is considered a safety hazard. The athlete and detective Paula Craig became a paraplegic after an accident whilst riding her bike here. In 2020 there was a campaign in Hertfordshire to improve the road's safety. Chapter 4 Other Watling Streets Dare Street, the Roman road from Cataractonium to Costopitum to the Antonine Wall, was also sometimes known as Watling Street. A third Watling Street was the Roman road from Momusium to Bramatenicum to Cumbria. Preston, Lancashire, preserved a Watling Street road between Ribbleton and Fulwood, passing the Sharrow Green Hospital. Both of these may preserve a separate derivation from the old English wellers or may have preserved the memory of the long Roman road while misattributing its upper stages to better preserved roads. The Roman road between Deva Victrix and Condate is also known locally as Watling Street. Chapter 5, Gallery 